Okay, so the topic of this updated video is mitosis and the cell cycle. So let's get started. Well, let's go ahead and begin with kind of a brief overview on what the cell cycle is. It's the repeating set of events in the life of a cell. You know, when cells are alive, they have functions to perform. So as they're going through their life, they're performing these functions, and every now and then, they pause and they stop from their functions in order to perform a process known as mitosis. But when we look at this pie graph here, we can see that uh, the cell cycle can be broken down into stages. And so stage, uh, the first being interphase. When we look at the pie graph here, interphase takes up the vast majority of the cell cycle. But interphase itself can be subdivided into three uh, subcategories. When we look at the G1 stage, and we're going to go into more detail in a moment, but it's the first stage of interphase, followed by the S stage, which is the second stage of interphase, followed by the G2 stage, which is the third stage of interphase. So when you look at the time spent during interphase on the pie graph, you can see interphase takes up the vast majority of the life of a cell. And then the cell will pause from interphase and it'll quickly go through mitosis. And then we come to a stage called prophase and metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, and these can be seen at the top of our picture here. Collectively, these are what make up the stages of mitosis. And the majority of this video is going to talk about what happens, not just during the cell cycle, but more specifically, what happens during mitosis. So let's look at that next. So now then, what is mitosis? Well, it's a type of cell division that involves somatic or non-sex cells. Examples of somatic non-sex cells would be like near neurons or your nerve cells, uh, red blood cells, white blood cells, and even skin cells. In fact, the vast majority of the body is made up of somatic cells, cells that are not involved in reproduction. And so this is, uh, these are the cells that are made by mitosis. They're somatic cells. And if we could examine their chromosomes, at a stage in the life, we can actually examine the chromosomes of the cells and we would discover them to be diploid. Well, in this picture here, here's a karyotype that shows diploid chromosomes. Notice how there's two chromosome number ones and two chromosome number eights and two chromosome number 17s. Because the chromosomes are arranged in pairs, we call these diploid chromosomes. And so the cells are, are, are thus diploid as well. Now, Mitosis, it's worth noting that in some forms of organisms, in some forms of life, it's kind of a form of asexual reproduction. Now, the way bacteria multiply, the way protista and fungi multiply, it's kind of a variation of mitosis, but it's, it's one way that they can produce another individual organism. And so the end result of mitosis, uh, we're gonna start with, like in my picture here, we're gonna start with one cell. Now, as the act of mitosis proceeds, ultimately by the end, we're going to create what are called daughter cells. So the two cells created at the end are basically identical copies of one another and genetically identical and are known as daughter cells. So we're going to go through this process in a little more detail now. Well, let's start out with the process known as interphase. And so interphase, as we saw earlier in that pie graph, is going to be divided into three substages. Number one, the first being the G1 stage. Now the G kind of stands for growth or gap. And so in this stage, this is where the normal functions of the cell are performed. You know, if it's a cell of your stomach, then the normal function would be to be uh, secreting digestive enzymes to help break down the food that you've eaten. So the normal functions of a cell are performed. Eventually, the cell will begin to grow and it will create additional organelles, additional uh, ribosomes, for example, additional lysosomes, for example. After all, the cell is about to divide into two, so you kind of have to make more parts to accommodate both cells. And ultimately, then, we come to the second stage, known as the S stage. And the S kind of stands for synthesis. Now, the word synthesis just means to make or to copy something. And in this case, DNA 
the active version of DNA called chromatin. Watch in my picture. See the, the six colorful squiggly lines? Pretend those are pieces of DNA. During the S stage, ident identical copies of those are created. So for a short time, cells actually have double the amount of DNA. And this is because of the S stage of interphase. And then, well, eventually, if there's a G1 stage, you can kind of figure out that eventually there's a G2 stage. This is the second growth stage, or some people will call it the second gap stage. And so here we have the cell begins to grow, and again, it's performing its normal functions. But ultimately, the cell is going to be uh, preparing next to enter mitosis. Now, before we get into actual mitosis, here's a kind of just a picture, an artist drawing of interphase. And what do we see? Well, we see that the nucleus is intact. You know, that's a telltale sign right there that this is a drawing of an interphase cell. In this picture right here, there's about, you know, a couple dozen cells in this picture. Many of the cells in this picture are interphase cells. For example, here's an interphase cell. And here's another interphase cell, and here's another interphase cell. Notice how all their, the, the nucleus is still intact. Well, now let's shift focus and move on into prophase, the first step of mitosis. So the DNA, the loose stringy version of DNA called chromatin, will start to coil into these familiar X-shaped looking chromosomes. So now you can see there's two red chromosomes in the picture, two green chromosomes in the picture, and two black chromosomes. So that's because one from mom and one from dad. One of the black chromosomes you inherited from mom, one of the black chromosomes you inherited from dad. Same for the two reds, same for the two greens. And eventually the nucleus begins to dissolve, and thus the chromosomes kind of get spilled into the cytoplasm of the cell. And ultimately, uh, objects called spindle fibers begin to grow and begin to form. And you're going to see the function of them in a moment. In this picture right here, an artist drawing, there's a few things that you can see that kind of give away that this is a drawing of prophase. Uh, number one, you can see spindle fibers forming. Another thing that gives it away is you can see the nucleus is dissolving. And another part that gives it away, you can see X-shaped chromosomes are beginning to form. Well, here's a picture of, again, about a dozen or a couple dozen cells. Some of these actually are in prophase, and I think there's two pictures, two cells in particular, that really stand out for prophase. This picture right here and this picture. Notice how the nucleus is beginning to dissolve, and, the, and it's looking like there's some chunky objects forming inside of the cell. Well, those are the chromosomes forming. Well, when we move on into metaphase, we've now come to the second stage of mitosis. And this is where those spindle fibers that were created during prophase, what they do is they attach themselves to the central mirror location of the chromosomes. And then the spindle fibers start to pull the chromosomes to the cell's equator, the middle line of the cell right there. They're all kind of lined up in the middle of the cell. That's a telltale signature of metaphase. In this artist drawing right here, you can see, hey, there's all the chromosomes lined up along the equator line of the cell. That's, again, a telltale characteristic of metaphase. In this picture right here, I think if you look, there's, uh, you can probably argue um, maybe two cells. I think this one right here and this cell right here. The top one, you know, you could probably argue that maybe this is actually right at the end of metaphase and at the beginning of the next step. But for lack of better options in these pictures right here, you can see a lot of the chunky chromosomes are still kind of along the middle of the cell. Definitely the one on the bottom is a, a better characteristic representation of metaphase. Well, now let's move on into anaphase, the third step of mitosis. And the spindle fibers begin to pull the chromosomes in opposing directions. Remember, one chromosome is made from two chromatids. So when the, when the chromosomes are being split apart, one chromatid will be pulled to the left, one chromatid will be pulled to the right. One chromatid of each chromosome will be pulled leftward, and one will be pulled rightward. And in this picture right here, you can see that the two chromatids are being pulled apart from one another. One chromatid being pulled to the left, one chromatid to the right. 
Also, you can see the spindle fibers drawn as the blue threads in this picture. And those are the ones, the spindle fibers are the parts that are actually doing the pulling. In this picture right here, if you look closely, I think you could probably only find one picture of an interphase cell, and there it is. You can see that uh, half of the chunky purplish objects are being pulled to the left and the other half to the right. Well, when, we move on, when we move on into telophase next, we have our fourth stage of mitosis. And so the spindle fibers, their function now fulfilled, begin to dissolve and break down. Uh, cytokinesis, we're going to talk more about this in a moment, but cytokinesis, the, the dividing or the splitting of the cytoplasm begins to occur, and the cell begins to basically separate into two. The nucleus begins to regrow and reform surrounding uh, the genetic material. And now let's focus on the genetic material. Those are still chromatids. But the chromatids are going to unwind back into their loose, stringy, active version of DNA called chromatin. And that's one of the other events of telophase. And so the end result, we now have two cells, diploid, and we would call these two daughter cells. In this drawing right here, here's an early picture, an early stage of telophase right here. We see that the two nuclei are beginning to regrow. In this picture, there's actually several pictures of cells, several cells in this picture that I think you could make a really good argument are in, are in telophase. I think this one right here could be a good argument. See how there's two lumps of, of genetic material at the left and right side of the cell. I think this picture right here and I think this picture right here, these are three good representations. There's probably even a few others you could find in this picture as well, but I thought these three that I highlighted in yellow are real good symbolic uh, examples of telophase. Well, a moment ago, I brought up cytokinesis. I want to say a few more things about it. Cytokinesis, the dividing of the cytoplasm. Uh, in animals, it's a little different than plant cells. Animal cells, you know, have an outer cell membrane. And because it's a flexible cell membrane, it, uh, it just begins to pinch inward and inward and inward until eventually the two cells separate. But in plants, it's not like that. Plants, you might recall, have an outer boundary to the cell membrane. They have what's called a cell wall, a very stiff and rigid cell wall. So just pinching inward is, is just not possible. So what happens is a, a plate begins to form. Uh, some membrane vesicles begin to form in the middle and they start to grow outward. And as the process continues, here's the, our cell plate beginning to form. As the process continues, some membrane vesicles just keep adding onto the cell plate. And you can see the cell plate begins to form from the inside and then slowly expands outward until eventually two cells have been created and are separated from one another. All right, as we start to wrap up this video, in this picture, I've highlighted in the yellow box, is that cell, would you say that's an interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase cell? I'm gonna go over the answer in three, two, one. Well, I hope you realized, well, there's two, there's chromatids being pulled to the top and bottom of the cell. And so I hope you see that is a clear picture of anaphase. Well, how about this example right there? Is that cell in yellow interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase? I'm gonna go over the answer in three, two, one. Well, I hope you see just a normal looking cell with the nucleus intact. And so I hope you would call this interphase. There's a lot of interphase cells. If you uh, browse through this picture, there's many other interphase cells in this picture as well. How about this picture right here? In the yellow box, would you say interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase? And I hope you said, uh, well, I hope you can see there's two cells almost fully formed. You can see a dividing line down the middle of the two. So I hope you said, hey, you know what? That's a pretty good telophase picture right there. Well, how about this picture right here? In the yellow box, is that interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase? Well. I hope you see 
the nucleus dissolving right there, and as a result, came to the conclusion of prophase. And lastly, how about this one in the yellow box? Interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase. Uh, I think the chromosomes are mostly aligned along the equator or the middle line of the cell, and I hope you then thought metaphase. Okay, now go ahead and pause the video and try to answer these eight questions. I'm going to go over the answers in three, two, one. Okay, so name the step that cell A is in. I hope you said prophase. How about cell B? I hope you said interphase. How about cell C? I hope you said telophase. How about cell D? I hope you said anaphase. In these drawings, I don't really see a good metaphase uh, example in these drawings. Question number five. In which cell, A, B, C, or D, is the nucleus dissolving? Well, that happens during prophase, so I hope you realized picture A. Number six. In what cell can you find evidence of cytokinesis and the cytoplasm dividing? Well, I hope you realize that cytokinesis mainly takes place during telophase, so picture C. Number seven. In which cell are the sister chromatids being separated? When do the chromatids be, or when are they pulled to opposite ends of the cell? Well, that's during anaphase, so I hope you said D. And question number eight, in which cell would the cell be performing its normal functions? Well, the normal functions are performed during interphase, so I hope you said picture B. Okay, and so if that uh, if you want some more practice, go ahead and pause the video and, and try to answer these questions here. If you're in my biology class, feel free to put your answers on a separate sheet of paper and see me before class or after class one day, and I'd be happy to check your answers. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this helpful.